Welcome back to the channel guys and to the wilderness. Today we are going to be testing out what I hope is going to be a game changer for sleeping in the wilderness in the summertime, especially in a campground like I'm at right now. So I've got the silver bullet behind me. I've also got my adventure truck with the cap on it and I've made some alterations to the back of it to accommodate a portable AC unit. But I've also got something I haven't seen anybody use on one of these portable AC units, and that is a canvas cutter bag, which is a really cool outdoor sleep system for hunters, fishermen, and just campers that like to be on the go. And it's a small space that I think that can cool down really quick. So I brought a temperature gauge, it's actually a meat probe, but we're going to test the temperatures in the truck and in the canvas cover with an AC unit and to see if it's actually gonna keep us cool enough to sleep comfortably through the night. So right here is my typical truck camping assembly. I've got my box that has all my cooking equipment in it. I have brought a portable stove with me. I keep my propane, a little propane tank in the back of the truck. I have my refrigerator, which I usually hook up to my truck power while I'm driving and then I usually bring portable power as well. I don't have that with me today because I'm just gonna be using shore power here at the campsite, which is pretty common. You know, it's like 20 bucks for a campsite. I'm getting power. This is typical for me if I'm charging the boat uh, and I need to run the fridge and all that stuff. But I do have a power station that will run all of this so I can be even more remote. Then we have our canvas cutter sleep system. Now this is, a three, I think it's a three, three and a half inch pad inside of here. And it's a, it's a really nice pad. And for me, that is the game changer. I did a video a few months ago in the heat. It was sweltering. And I think it's probably the last time I'm gonna sleep in a hammock. That's my typical summertime setup for truck camping. I'll sleep in the hammock. You get a nice breeze going. It's not terrible, but the mosquitoes were just so bad. They were biting me through, through the thing. And it was just, I was still sweating. It was not a comfortable sleep. And I said, that's it. And I basically went online and I got this unit I'm about to show you the next day. Now, this is not a sponsor. I bought this with my own cash. So I'm going to tell you guys what I think about it. And I have, uh, I have no obligation to give them a positive review, but this is the Zero Breeze. I think this is the, uh, the second iteration of it. Um, and there's a lot of videos online uh, that could show you how to use these and different setups. You got the hoses and whatnot. Um, and it was expensive. You know, it was around a uh, thousand bucks and it has a, a, an adapter uh, for DC power. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work with my power station. So we're just gonna be running off the standard AC power. And there's a few different ways you can configure it. Let me show you how I've got my truck rigged out to accommodate the AC for this system. So here we are in the back of the adventure wagon where I've spent many nights in the outdoors. Uh, absolutely no magic happens in here. It's, it's really just get your sleep, get up and get after the outdoors the next day. Nothing glamorous about it. And I'd like to keep it just plain modular. Um, there's some really cool ideas out there for rigging out the back of your truck. And uh, I've seen some, some people rig up some AC units inside of there. For me, I like to just keep it modular so I can take everything out. I can use this to haul dirt. I can use it to haul deer, uh, you know, whatever. I can clean it out, use it for different purposes. I'll close this when I go to sleep. So this will all be enclosed. It's not quite long enough for me. It's, it's not quite six feet long. Uh, so I have to sleep at a little bit of an angle, but I'll put the AC unit right here. I'll plug in the power to, uh, for today's circumstance. I'm gonna be using shore power, but I've used portable power, stuck it right here, used it to run it, and um, and it cools it down, but a little bit, but my gosh, I haven't tested it all the way through the night to really see. It's still sweltering in here. So I took a just a, a cutting board. I had an extra fish cleaning board, and I mounted it right here to the window of my truck. Um, all I did was just take a, take a knife and cut out the holes in the mesh for the bug screen. I attached the uh, cutting board right here. It's, it's really solid. And then I can slide my window out. I have uh, 
I have the sliding windows on my truck cap. And so now these holes are exposed. So then I can just run the hoses through there. I've got a little piece of leftover boat carpet right here just to wedge up in there and close up the gaps. And um, the AC will suck in air from out there, put in fresh cool air inside of here and then shoot, um, shoot air out, the hot air. So that is an option, but I got to thinking, man, you know, what if I wanted to sleep out in, on the boat? Or what if I just wanted to keep it real simple and use the canvas cutter? Well, then we can just stick the hose inside of there. So let's go check that out. Okay, so the canvas cutter actually comes with these really cool little poles that go up into a little tent form that keeps a nice bubble, like a tent above your head, so you can fully close it. I don't know where those are, so we're gonna have to do a little bush crafting here. They say you can do just about anything with cordage and a knife. So I've got a tree here that's kind of hanging over like a bent fishing pole sitting over the canvas cutter. What I'm gonna do is, is take this, um, take this bank line, essentially make it look like a fishing pole that's just grabbing the top of the, uh, the deal where my head is gonna be and pulling it up. So the first thing I did was find something round that I could tie a little slip knot on, slip knot on and keep it uh, fastened to that. So I found a little green uh, pecan that had just fallen. Nice and round, hard. This is wild. Look at the bag inflating. It's like, it's like my own little cocoon in there. Just a bubble. So with it being canvas and having a waterproof uh, outer coating to be in the rain, you could literally just sleep out in this thing. The AC unit, not gonna make it. But I'm going to put a thermometer in there and we're gonna see how cool it's gonna get in 10 minutes. Outside air temp right now, 94.5 in the shade. Let's stick it in there and let's put a timer on it. All right, I can really feel air getting sucked in and there's hot air coming out. Now this is on the highest power possible. This thing is, it's like a bounce house. Let's see the temp. 72, 71, 68.9. That tells me everything I need to know. 68.9, <sighs> I think that's the way. And we can also just stick that inside of the truck, have it added protection from the elements if we want to. It may not uh, cool off as much with uh, you know just the air and the ducts being the way they are right now, but uh, we'll hook it up to the truck tonight and we'll see. There we go. Oh, goodness, that's a big old bass. Slurping spoon, ladies and gentlemen. Don't count it out. Don't count it out. Don't think it's just for for bass or for crappie and, and white bass. It'll catch these right here too. Yeah. Yeah, brother. 
slurping. That's a nice crappie. On the slurping spoon. In an incredible circumstance, I think I see a rain cloud. Very mysterious this time of year in Texas, but could it be? It's a rainbow. It's a rainbow. It's a single rainbow. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the fishes and the rain. Okay, update time. We've gotten back to camp. And I realized I was kind of hearing something when I was traveling back to my campsite and my tire is just completely flat. Completely flat. And since I'm moving right now, I've been moving stuff around and repacking tools and organizing and everything. And uh, I forgot to bring my three quarter inch uh, wrench in my, and I normally keep it in my truck and it's not in here. I've got my impact wrench and it's just not, it's it's not powerful enough. Um, it's great for changing tires, but I need that, I need that wrench to break it loose. So, OSG is gonna come uh, bring us that tool in the morning. But we're gonna camp out here on our flat tire and I have moved my my bedding to the truck with the AC unit in there. I've had it running for about 30 minutes. So after we eat our dinner, we're gonna go in there and we're gonna see uh, how good it feels. Life is good, you know, you just get a flat tire every once in a while, something happens, things happen. But we will adapt and overcome. And I'll see you guys inside of the cab for a full tour of the AC inside of the truck cap. Oh, also, I just checked my Victron for the boat, so the refrigerator, um, the, the camera's sitting on top of the refrigerator right now. It has been running since I got here, uh, hooked up to the boat. I've run the electronics and everything, and I didn't even charge it the last time I went out with the family, and we're still at 91% on our batteries with the two uh, 31 AGMs. Chola motor is at 88%, so I'm just gonna keep the fridge running off of the bass boat power all night, because it can. Welcome to the adventure wagon bedding area, complete with bugs and one little spider up here in the corner. But that's good. Ecosystem, ecosystem in here. So I've had the Zero Breeze running inside of here for probably, oh, close to an hour and a half before I crawled in here. So this is the tube that is producing the cold air. And I'm gonna say it's it's good, like 70 degree air coming out of here. But the entire the entire thing, the entire space inside of here is I don't know, probably 75. It's not super cold. I could still opt to take this hose right here and put it inside of the bag. I feel like I gotta try it. I at least gotta try putting that inside of here. Um, but it's honestly pretty comfortable. Still in the mid to high 80s outside. It's very warm, um, but we're pumping out. We're pumping out that, that hot air with the tubes. There is a lot of condensation. There's a lot of condensation coming out of here and I just put the, uh, the tube that it comes with for the condensation um, to drain outside by the tailgate. But I did not put it in there. 
uh, before. So we have a little bit of uh, drainage coming out. Here we are guys, inside of the bubble. No need to put any braces or anything. The air just fills it up. It's cooling down really quick in here. I wish my truck bed was just a little bit longer where I could fully extend my legs, but <laughs> it's, it's not bad. Here's the tube, pumping that cold air in. And I turned it down off the high setting to just the regular cool setting. There's no temperature, um, you know, thermostat on it. It's just simply you turn it on, you turn the fan up. It does just have like a high mode and a regular mode. But with this canvas cutter being, you know, pretty much airtight, having that coating on it it fills up pretty nice <laughs> it's kind of cool it's like my own little sleep bubble so I have to kind of turn sideways a little bit to extend my legs but it's working pretty good try to get some sleep and I'll see you guys in the morning well Good morning, Danglers. Let's get a check of the morning air has been coming in. As you can see, I'm I'm out of my bag. I actually had to get out of there. Uh, you know, I don't really know what time it was. Probably like two or three in the morning because it was actually getting quite cold inside. It says it's blowing 55 degree air right now. I don't know if that's true, but the inside of the cab is uh is is comfortable is quite comfortable or i just need like a blanket of course the temperature is probably in the 70s outside so if it were still in the high 80s you know it might be a little different inside of the bag totally a game changer like that is the real deal inside of the uh the truck bed it's still cool like it's, it's definitely comfortable so this is kind of the magic of the of the system um, that I built because this is um, you can face these in different directions and that way you're not getting you know the hot and the cold air mixed together and the great thing about it is it can be raining and I can have that whole system inside of there I can put it inside of the bag or on the outside just depending on you know really how hot it is and I'm good I don't have to worry about the weather <laughs> All right, I have filled up her tire with air. Just enough to get to the boat ramp. What a, what a buzz kill. And uh, I've got this flat tire, but I've identified the leak and the tire looks absolutely terrible. The trailer does too, but uh, it has like no tread le left right here. Uh, and it's sort of warped and I can't tell if it's been patched right there or not, but that's where the the leak is coming out of I can I can hear it squealing but while we're waiting let's get a verdict on the AC unit the zero breeze is is that the end-all be-all it is a good unit um, to get air to your direct person for Texas heat like in that evening time, when you're trying to cool it down, no. Like you're not gonna turn it down where it's gonna be like your house basically. You know, with the truck cap being an uninsulated space, it really just didn't, it, and it has not. I've tried it out on other hot days. It has not cooled it down enough, uh, really below the 80s inside of there to be comfortable enough to go to sleep. At night, or when you got really good shade, uh, yeah, yeah, it works. It works good enough, I would say. Uh, but I think the game changer was adding that canvas cutter. Um, you could even do this inside of, uh, you know, a light sleeping bag might even make sense, where it just uh, fills that that bag with a with a bubble of cool air and keeps you comfortable. But when you have it blowing air like really close to you, like on your face or on your body, like on your person basically, it, it works pretty good. I just wouldn't, 
I wouldn't use it to cool down any big spaces. Adding the bubble of air effect inside of that canvas cutter, I will definitely be doing that again. My only uh, fear was, and this kind of kept me up a little bit, was like, okay, what if the unit goes out and I'm inside of this bag zipped up and it just like collapses on my face and I just had like these <laughs> light dreams of like being suffocated in a trash bag and dying and just no one, you know, no one even knowing they just discover me, you know, the next day. So um, there was that, but if you put the frame inside of there, then you should be fine. I just, <laughs> I didn't have my frame, I forgot it. Anywhere where it's warm climate, you're looking to go early season scouting. And if you like to truck camp, or if you have a small uh, camper that you even want to utilize this in, I would, I would think that would be a, a really good idea as well. Just to kind of cool down a individual space or a tiny insulated space. That's where it works well. But hey, we learned some things today. We caught some fish, we got a flat tire, uh, but we slept good. We slept good, and that's the key. So we can go on more adventures today. So I'm gonna wait on OSG so I can change this tire and uh, continue on with the, the house drama. You guys stay tuned uh, for more of that and more outdoor action. I'll see you back here on the channel. Saving the day. Once you crack them, it's easy.